Good morning, everybody. Um, sorry, just get myself situated. Um, welcome to uh, Fujitsu's launch of uh, Wales Derby's Wednesday's um, webinars, although it's not Wednesday. So we're kind of mixing things up. Even a late start today, which feels odd for me um, at 9 a.m. But um, hopefully everybody is on time. We're going to have some fun. We're going to discuss the topic of Fujitsu's and sales, the importance of um, what it is when we're talking across the coffee table, so to speak, if that's your role with your business or company. And also if you're in front of contractors and, and really just kind of sharing information about the tools. The title for today is Fujitsu 2021 Sales Tools and New Product Review. Um, this is gonna be a, a, a good presentation where we're gonna kind of close out with giveaways or apps they're free they're no charge for yourselves it's like a digital catalog and the information as in that sales role when you're setting up a system from what we need to do properly installation would be the guy who comes behind you and then even after that guy the tech so along those three different platforms of literally touching it unless you're an owner operator and you do one-stop shop you do it from you know, from sales all the way through to commissioning, there's a few key points that we need to be aware, of, even in the sales role. So that's what my goal is to share with you. So we're gonna have some fun with this. Um, there's a lot of new stuff, Fujitsu's never stopped, you know, stopping. They're always making advancements or improvements, and we're gonna share that with you today. My name is Anthony Tossi, I'm there on the left. My information, uh, we'll have that at the end. If you choose, you can take a picture. I have Mr. Rick Costa. He's also with Wales Derby on the New York side. He's in the background, so he'll be assisting with any questions that you might have. There's a chat box for you guys to kind of interact with us. Uh, we might have some good questions along the line, and, and Rick will say, Aunt, you know, something came in, want to share it, so he'll step into that role if need be. Uh, please be aware there are some takeaways for today. Um, I believe there's three, one being Wales Derby, right? So we have a line sheet of manufacturers that we represent, and we want to make sure you're aware of those services that we can provide. The front end is a list of all of our manufacturers with some uh, links, so to speak, their websites, because it's all about information, and that's no different with Fujitsu. Fujitsu is um, it's a big animal in the world of mini splits, and they're global. They're not just mini split. Also, they're in the technology side of things. So there are advancements in which we can take advantage of them when we sell to our customers really is second to none. So we need to know those little fine points when looking at Fujitsu. Now, I'm not gonna review the catalog. The catalog is really something for homeowners. I am gonna review the catalog so that you should make yourself aware of what they have access to. The information that they're already educating themselves on is a, a make and break crossroads, so to speak, when you are in front of them. If you're a salesperson in front of the, you know, John Q public and you're trying to sell in the system, you know, they're kind of sizing you up with a very simple question, you know, and I always throw this out there and, and this is for everybody. I don't care where you sit in the pecking order of uh, installing a, a mini split, regardless if it's mine or by others. but. How many of you right now, if you can put in the chat box, what does HSPF stand for? If I was a homeowner, if I was to ask you, what is the HSPF of this particular model? You know, what would you say? What is HSPF? And these are some of those finer points that we need to sharpen our, our, our weapon, you know, our tool, our mind almost. We need to really take hold of what this technology is because it's not a air conditioner. It's a heat pump, and this is the, the comfort that we can deliver all year round. And um, it's really important to kind of get into nuances of what the product can do for us. So, so just to give you a little bit of, um, sorry, I'm going to move my mouse over. Wales Derby, we are located on two sides of the river. We have Warren, New Jersey. We also have Islandia, New York. Uh, we cover a lot of territory. Um, you know. Montauk to Manhattan for the New York side, five boroughs including, and then a little bit of down uh, Westchester, lower Westchester there, just north of the Bronx. And then New Jersey has uh, lower 
um, downstate and then most of northern New Jersey and some of, I'm not even sure if we go out to Pennsylvania, things are starting to change with some of our um, distribution. They, they spread out a little bit. So we kind of have those uh, avenues to still promote and be involved. But um, we're here to help you guys. Uh, anywhere between those two A's and B's, uh, if you have any issues, calls us, you know, call us and let us know how we can help you. Looking at this slide here, this is what Fujitsu Halcyon, Halcyon being the residential segment of Fujitsu. Fujitsu is the mothership, they're global, they're, they're a power, uh, power player in technology with chips and uh, so forth, what they do for computers. And basically, if you look at that outdoor unit, um, it is a computer. It is, it is a, a lot of circuitry, a lot of boards, a lot of technology. And um, this is some of the challenges that I deal with when um, working with techs and um, having them to fully understand what's out there. So they got to work on it. But if you look across the top there, there are your offers, you know, your offerings for what we need to do inside the building, people's homes. The new addition we'll discuss is our multi-position air handler. That's a traditional duct work of about an inch of static. Uh, but everything about that, um, it is Fujitsu. It is a Japanese inverter uh, outdoor unit with a completely um, inverter inside. Um, we do have a partnership with Ream. And we talk about unitary, not that I do, but other people have that uh, availability. And uh, this is not that. It looks like it's twin brother, but um, truly and honestly, it doesn't perform anything like the unitary. All right. This is a little bit of the brochure. There is the uh, most current cover. So if you are in possession of a Fujitsu catalog, I always say make sure you got current paper. And that's no different when we are you know, possibly walking in with the catalog in our hands. This is a downloadable document on the website. So that means the general public has access to this. And I'll show you some of the information. I'm going to get into the website. I'm gonna get into something that's more, uh, your focus should be focusing on the portal and then some of the apps. And that would be the, uh, the second half of this presentation. Trying to help you better understand how to size a system based off of the space. Uh, applying maybe some quick little um, apps that we can go around and confirm our line sets and what we need to do when where the outdoor unit is. If there's a discussion of a, you know, they are thinking they want the outdoor unit this distance from where the indoor unit is. We have parameters we need to play nice with. That's always been in Fujitsu's uh, forever and ever. So you have that role. I mean, you might think that you don't have to be aware, uh, aware of the line sets, but you might because the conversation with the homeowner is leading to some questions on distance or how close even. So there's a minimum, there's a maximum, and there is an elevation maybe for some taller buildings. So just, you know, have a little patience. We're going to open up our minds a little bit, maybe let some information in, and we'll start practicing stuff maybe this afternoon as we go forward. All right. But nice thing about what Fujitsu does, not only with information, but even on the product, they really kind of lock in with color coding. And uh, you can see here these colored bands for the different sections of the catalog. It just helps you with not having to fumble. If I'm working with only singles, you know, it's a one head in one, you know, one outdoor unit. I know I gotta be in the blue section. So at the top of the pages there, are these colored bands there, and now you're not fumbling or looking for uh, information maybe in the green section. If you're in the green section, then you're in something that has more than one indoor head connected to the outdoor unit. So, you know, the information is not going to be helpful there. I always talk about the orange section here, and that's accessories. And what I like about accessories, it's upselling. We're, we're making more money on the same job site because we're listening and there's concerns or maybe what we're selling has a wireless remote and they want to have a fixed wired controller to the wall. Or maybe now we even talk about Wi-Fi and things of these nature. So, you know, there's what we come, what comes standard out of the box. And then as we see now more and more with new product offering, we're not even giving you controllers anymore. Controllers are becoming a la carte. So you have to start understanding how to connect the dots with what is available with this particular model if I'm starting to, you know, focus on this. This is perfect for the application whatever you want to start talking budget with these people, you know, upselling into some maybe rebates because of like um, efficiencies. You know, we don't have, I think we have, if I think about it now, we probably have four different, maybe three to four different nines. 
maybe I'm off a little bit. I think we may have given up one. But we have more than just one wall mounted nine. And that's just something I, I, I remember having a conversation and they were like, wow, I didn't realize you had more than maybe the 115 and a 230 volt. You know, then we had the next one up, the, the more efficient one at the time was RLS three Ys in the world. And that's now changed. But truth be told is, um, you know, we have to see the differences, even though the number in the model number, it kind of tricks us in thinking they're all the same. They're not. There's a lot of differences. So this is, again, where the catalog can be a benefit to show you those performances, the features, um, and so forth. So the catalog is good. It's limited. I don't ever say it's not something I want you to be paying attention to. I want you to pay attention to what the information's in here solely if you want to focus on it is because what homeowners have access to. If they're reading something, they're going to see what you know. You're, you know, they want to size you up to see if you're really working in their benefit or not. And when they start feeling a little uncomfortable because, you know, HSPF, what is it? I don't know if anyone's put that in the chat box yet, but you know, that's one of those little key things that they're educating themselves. They're spending some money and they want to make sure they're making the right decisions. So um, really, really good stuff in a couple few pages that you can derive information. You can practice your script. You can talk about the key points. That's in the features in the red section. Like the whole front end of this catalog is all basically fluff. It's marketing 101. So it's about pictures and pointing and indoor, outdoor, and kind of give them a little lay of the land of what it might look like in their, in their homes. So again, I don't, I don't know why, but Fujitsu feels that 70 some odd pages of somewhat technical information is needed for a homeowner to make decisions when I really think sometimes it's um, undermining our sales force sometimes, or maybe our even installation guys, or even our tech guys. You know, I always say, if you're knocking on the door, you're in sales. So I have classes with the, my installers. I go, how many guys are in sales? I, you know, raise a hand and none of them do. And I'm always like, you know, there you go. As soon as you knock on the door, you know, they're going to start asking you questions. You're in sales. So it's good to be more versed in what the product that you're installing and so forth. So if you want to, if you have the ability, if you're on your, on your computers or laptop, but take your cell phone. And if you want to download or have a PDF of the most current 2021 catalog, Here's a QR code. You can just open up your, your uh, camera. Um, if you have the app, it might open up right away. Or if you have a QR reader, so just I'll leave this open for a second here as I talk. But again, there's the cover. If you have an older catalog, then you don't have the most recent uh, information. All right. So I just want to make sure that people see the visual of the man, you know, the, the husband and the son sitting on the couch. They've been using puppies over the last couple of years. So if you have an older catalog, uh, like I have and year to year as I, as I have them for uh, resources or even to show and tell, I, I just draw a line or write old, maybe on the old one and I just kind of stick it in the file for myself. But uh, that is the most uh, recent current full line catalog. All right. I believe they're going to start printing them. They were really kind of holding off. And it kind of makes sense. I guess I don't know how many people are really getting out and delivering this stuff or we weren't during, doing live training. So the digital just made sense. But you can download this to, uh, you know, your, your tablet, your smartphone. And just always remember, it's available on FujitsuGeneral.com. It's literally in a download section in the residential tab. And I'll show you where that is. So let's move along. Once you get into the, into the catalog, it kind of breaks it down into, again, here's the blue section. So these are single zone ductless, right, heat pumps. And it shows you from left to right the VTU capacity. And you can see there how many nines we have. We have in this, you know, this is the latest one. So we have four different number nine models. And you can see in the blue and the brick, uh, brick in, the, uh, in these areas here, they kind of give you a quick little snapshot of what the performance is for both heating and cooling. What is the minimum? Uh, tested, right? Listed 14 degrees for cooling. Uh, the bottom one there, that is our 115 volt, and that's a, a 15 degree cooling. And then the, the red for heat, I guess, is where you can see, all right, this is a heat pump. The top one there, the ASUGs, 09s now, this is the latest and greatest. They're a minus six heat pump out of the box. And then as you go down to like a mid tier, uh, the LZs, um, and anytime 
you see there's two listed LZs. That second one has the letter H in it. If you look at the outdoor unit there, AOUG 9 lzah one If you go up to this top one above where it's a minus six, it, you don't see the H in that model. So whenever you see the letter H, and these are key little things to pick up on, the letter H will always represent a minus 15 heat pump. Okay, minus 15, it's pretty cold, and these things perform really, really well. If installed right, again, where you are in the pecking order, you're in the sales side of things. You're literally setting this thing up to operate at its key top performance. And if we don't do certain things, or if we're not in tune to why we need these things off the ground, and you know we're using them for heaters and heat pumps and all the things that we want to um, you know, take advantage of with the technology, well, you know, it's, it's a problem. Uh, it's an air to air heat pump. And again, minus 15 sounds like it's pretty cold out. Sounds like potential for snow, you know, and all of a sudden you get snow drifts because it's on a pad. So I always say no pads, unless we're in Georgia, right? And it's solely for maybe cooling purposes, then a pad will be fine. It's the issue in the wintertime, normal operation, so cold water, uh, wind or air blowing across that coil, you get a frosting. The, the coil starts to frost up. And to protect itself, it has to go into a defrost cycle and thereby it has some dripping of the, the melting, right? The melting of the condensation or the, or the frost. So if it's 14 degrees outside, potentially for uh, freezing on a pad, now you have potential for ice building up inside the cabinet. So that's why we say, get them off the ground. If anything, focus on drainage. If you allow this at least two, three inches off the pad, I'm okay with that. Again, you have snow loads, you have you know, drifting, you have things that might hinder the airflow, but you know, with a shovel and a good back, you can get out there and clear it, and then probably the no heat coal will go away. It's got to be some extremes, but I'm just trying to give you the logistics of what we're doing here in the Northeast, and we're resorting back to old rule of thumbs. It's an AC, it's an air conditioner, put it on the pad, and that's not the case when we're dealing with heat pumps, okay? So in the nines, you see we do have four different offerings. They have different performances. They have different features. They might have rebatable um, uh, uh, efficiencies. So if you have a homeowner or if you're someone who goes after rebates, you upsell and an offset with rebates, we better know the differences between those three or four different models there. And as you go left to right in this one slide, it brings you to the 12 model, again, showing you indoor outdoors. It's just a quick little checks and balance as to maybe what you're discussing for the space or the application. And then you can see the 15, it's limited. There's only two. It's more of the high end, the LZ, um, standard or the LZ outdoor AOU with the H. So minus six or minus 15 there. And of course, then we go out to some uh, bigger BTUs with the single um, non ducted ductless offering, right? It's funny, they don't say wall mount here. It's amazing how we just spin things and, you know, yeah, give me a wall mount. And they, they list it true to what it is. It's a ductless mini split. You know, we don't have any duct works for literally comforting the space and returning uh, um, turning over the space with the return air right in the room. So they're very efficient that way. But here, just showing you what those uh, blocks there, the blues for cooling, um, and then the, the blue, red there is for your heating capacities. Now, with that being said, heat pumps continue to operate, right? They're rated, it's a rating. Doesn't mean it just gives up and it doesn't do anything, but there's a derating, there'll be a dropping off. But for Jitsu engineers, what they do, the technology, the inverter DC driven components, they really truly have the data to prove, even at minus 15, what the BTU capacities should be. Dot, dot, dot. If you do this, if you do that, if you, you know, continuing down the line after the sale is made, equipment shows up, installers have to play nice with line sets, you know, distance and, and all the things that we talk about when we talk to those guys in elevation or even the techs uh, getting out there to make repairs. It's a, it's a critical charge piece of equipment, and the length of the line sets, I can't say enough, there are D ratings and there are charts. We just need to understand that a little better and know we're not designing something that just cannot perform in the conditions that we're putting them in. I can, I can make mentions of this maximum number, and it sounds so impressive, right? So I can give you 
an 18 with the letter X in it. So it's an ASU 18 RL X FZ or whatever. And that X represents uh, an extended line set upwards of 164 feet. That sounds amazing. Yeah, but if you extend it to those distances from flare to flare, outdoor to indoor, you're not producing what you think you're reading in the catalog. And that's the that's the kind of smoke and mirrors of the catalog that I'm trying to get people not to have such a comfort level. You know, for years and years and years, I need a catalog, I need a catalog. And I'm like, really, tell me why. Well, what's in here that you just need that security of when I'm talking about the portal, I'm talking about far more detailed information, you know, it, it alleviates the liability and it really does start with the sales guy. And that's where you guys sit. So if you understand how the machine operates, needs to be installed and make the wise choice based off of a load and then preferences with features or chasing rebates, that's where the catalog kind of gets you more into a sniper and not a shotgun. You know, we want to go out there quick and easy, get me in, get me out, and we're shooting with a shotgun, and we're hoping for the best, right? Now, we want to be snipers. We want to be sharp. We want to be educated, and we want to make a very decisive decision because of what someone is asking us to do for them. You know, we're in that position guaranteeing their comfort, right? Or maybe performance or even efficiencies. That's what their that's what their goal is. I want to reduce energy, I want to reduce this, and all of a sudden their electric bill isn't any less than what it was with a window unit. And that's because maybe we sized it improperly. You know, oversizing. People, oh, you can never oversize a mini split. Yes, you can. Okay. Dehumidification. This is not a dehumidifier. Please don't ever use a word. I'm going to install it and we're going to dehumidify your basement. That should never be something you want to say with Fujitsu. So um, it will help if it's properly sized. But truth be told, I probably would not recommend, yeah, we can get rid of that thing on the floor. We'll put this thing on the wall and you should be comfortable. I've had too many times people have really failed miserably. And, you know, I've gotten involved and I got to spin the story. And sometimes it doesn't look good in your favor. Well, why did they tell me this? Could be a lack of education, could be just, you know, they're in the moment, they just want to get off to the next call, whatever it may be. But it truly is not a dehumidifier. Here we are showing the, the highest sear. Again, this new offering, the LZASs of the world, of LZAH, um, they're upwards of that 31.1, 33.1 sear. All right, so again, sear represents the efficiency in cooling. Higher the number, the better. And this is where you can compare us against by others. You're up against, hey, you know, I had a guy in, he talked about this brand, that brand. And you know what? I know that brand. And I can tell you this, I outperform them. I outperform them here. I outperform them there. You know, I got a rebate. You start stacking the deck based off of the information that we are hopefully going to, you know, get a little deeper in. We got to start, stop being so surface only. Oh, sir, it's Fujitsu. It's great. It's quiet. It's, you know, it's the, now we got to start drumming down into where monies is available because of efficiencies and so forth. All right. So heat pumps, like I said, they don't stop. They continue. Um, again, a little bit more of other products we have in regards to blue section uh, singles. We just don't offer the ASUs, which is a wall mounted ductless. We do go down. We have floor mounts, which is our AGUs. Again, the acronyms are key. If we start picking up on the letters and the model numbers, we really have speed now and confidence in where we're writing, you know, a bill of material or writing a quote. You know, it's like, oh, I got to get back to you or, you know, I'll, I'll go out to the car and I'll give you, you know, you can do it right in front of them. And that's so impressive when you can show them you're not skipping a beat. You're writing as they're talking. You're already making decisions in the, your direction in which you want to deliver the best uh, options for your customer. You know, so. I don't ever dismiss model numbers. The letters and numbers and the model numbers with Fujitsu, I've learned it's never failed me. Never has it ever failed me because I know when I'm looking at a model and that goes from you guys to your installers, receiving a delivery perhaps and something's not right because I'm, I'm looking, I'm needing a single outdoor head, but the outdoor unit, I'm sorry, the outdoor unit they're delivering has a letter Z in it. And I can tell you that, the letter Z represents zoning. You know, I'm supposed to get a single 18 head and a single 18 outdoor. And somehow, yeah, it says 18, it says AOU, but 
I know the letter Z. So this is those quick little pickups on to make problems go away. And then obviously for a, a technician to really pay attention because he has to order parts. He has to talk to tech services, myself, Rick, TSAs locally with wholesalers, or even calling Fairfield, um, I'm sorry, Spring, I think it's Springfield now, New Jersey. They just moved their location. So there's a lot of stuff, even in what we just walk on by. We don't even pay attention. Yeah, yeah, it's a wall map. No, it's an ASU. It's an ASU 9, ASU 12, and all those letters after it really start to give you a lot of insight as to what it can do. Like I say, the letter H, that's for the outdoor unit, minus 15 heat pump. If you had a letter Y, and that's the previous, that letter Y represents Wi-Fi. So if you're focusing on Wi-Fi and you're not, writing the model with the letter Y, chances are you're not going to get a Wi-Fi enabled or, you know, uh, on board already, uh, you know, built in Wi-Fi piece of equipment. So again, little letters can really change, make or break what's actually going to be installed. And we don't want to be at that point that it's already been installed. Yeah, it was kind of a mess up. We didn't catch it. So it's just a matter of having the ability everywhere along the line when people are well versed even in the model numbers, what the letters and numbers represent. There's a whole section of the catalog, if you choose to, that you can get yourself more versed in that. So as you see here, still in the blue section, what we offer in some larger BTU capacities, no different again here with the blue and the red, showing you what some of the minimum capacities are for the heat pump and cooling, and then obviously reverse cycle heat pump in uh, the red there, showing you some of their listed um, you know, temperatures that they can go down to. And then we go all the way down to from um, mini cassettes or compact cassettes to now ducted units, low static ducted. We do have some older offerings. They were wall mounts. They were called universal. Uh, we have an 18 and 24 down there, the ABUs, B for two or both. It can be either mounted on the wall or you can actually mount it on the ceiling. And then down at the bottom, the uh, RCLX, and the, um, that's an older model number. So we have now the RGLX in a large cassettes. So um, more commercial, I've done a couple in storefronts, uh, but not every day, but they do offer some nice features like maybe adding a piece of ductwork. So we can do like a remote office. It was uh, uh, on the island, they have these, I guess it's called stone in hands. They're massage you know, therapy places and uh, in the lobby, we put one of these up in the large, uh, it was like a south facing, a lot of glazing. Uh, so a lot of solar gains. So we put a big set up there and they had a little office behind the, um, the front counter. So with that one, you have the ability to do infield duct work. And we kind of dumped a nice, uh, you know, a register into that office, not having to add another unit. So again, understanding some of the features and benefits of just by selecting why this over that? Well, you know, I'm going to put this here. We're going to do three-way throw. We'll cover everybody in the in the vestibule, and everybody will be happy. And then for the manager or whatever over there in the office, only you know 20 feet away, we can put a small duct and give them some comfort in that room too. So there's some key things that we cover in more details when I'm, um, you know, in a, in a training more more or less. This is brand new. Uh, four different sizes here. We have a two, two and a half, three ton, and four ton. Uh, AMUG 36s um, and the AOUs. Notice the difference there. On the lower, there's RGLX, AOU 24, AOU 30, RGLX. Um, and then to the right with the larger three ton, four ton, they're LMASs, number ones, all right? Generation one. That's what that number one represents. It's the first release. As they make changes, they go to two. As I make another change, maybe. Uh, the, the number might change before they even then completely change the model number, um, which we will see with the next slide. But multi-position air handler, um, four-way throw, really nice, small outdoor units, horizontal. Everything about this is Fujitsu inverter technology. Really, really smart um, in what we can do, as we know, with traditional. But now it's totally a North American approach up to an inch of static on our ductwork. And now we can go into any replacement. We can go into any build out, traditional high ranch, let's say, and you know, we're doing the whole top floor. We put a unit up in the attic and I have the ability to you know, do multiple drops because of that blower's capacity with the higher static up to one inch. And I'll say this, not that we want to design, 
our ductwork to be at one inch. It just allows us the flexibility to overcome some higher resistance or static ductwork. It might be existing, or it might just be, you know, we're pushing the limits on a new install, but we have to play nice because that's it. We can't do more than that. And if all of a sudden we sacrifice, um, you know, what the blower's capacity is, then I can't guarantee we're going to deliver the comfort. And it really has nothing to do with the equipment. It just might start pointing at, hey, we really should have divided the upstairs and made it to two of these units and then have more flexibility and play nice with our uh, cap capacities, all right? So to see the one on the left, that was a Rheem Rood um, a Venture. And that indoor unit does look very similar to the new offering, but they are completely different. Our EEV, our metering device, as we know for Jitsu to be, is always in the outdoor unit. Our EEV, expansion valve, right? The electronic expansion valve. With the one on the left, you need two separate power sources, one for the outdoor unit and then one for the indoor unit. Not ours now. With our Fujitsu, we always power up the outdoor unit. And then from there, we power up the indoor unit. So it's, again, nice, nice little things of changing what looks very traditional with ductwork and up, you know, upflow uh, uh, fans and noise. You know, there's some differences even with decibels because Fujitsu, again, there's a variable speed DC driven components. It's, um, it's really, it's unstoppable. It's, it's like a no brainer, right? So why is it multi-position? Well, we can do an up, a left, a right, and a down. In-field uh, conversion, there are options. We also have additional electric uh, heating. But as far as the heat pump, this is a minus five heat pump out of the box. And I got to say, if I had an option in my own home, what I know when I bought this house, came with central air, was relatively new. So if the day comes or I might just decide to pull the trigger, and I don't have heat currently coming out of the registers of my home. I have, you know, hydronic heat for the, from a boiler. This one piece of equipment just might really change the whole dynamics of how I have comfort in my home. And that's what you want to start tapping into when you're talking to customers. Always relate that comfort, comfort, energy. Com you know, we're in the comfort and energy business if you're in the sales side of things. You got to tap into that. You got to tap into resources like rebates. You know, quiet. Comfort is more than just skin temperature. So really good opportunities here to go this summer and really attack a lot of what was never thought to be a Fujitsu option. It now is that, okay? All aluminum, so we're changing some of the materials. We're having some issues with copper recently and, and uh, formicary corrosion and things of that nature. Really good sear here. A single fan outdoor unit, but not double stack. Some of our competitors comparing us to others have similar offerings. There are differences. Tap into that. Size matters sometimes when it's outside someone's bedroom and two fans blowing. Um, again, I talked about line sets here on the larger three and four ton, upwards of 230 feet. That's distance one way, flare to flare. It doesn't mean that you always want to make that, that attempt to run this as far as you can because you have derating. I'm not going to promise you, and there's a chart that I can share or you can find on the portal that, all right, this is what they tell me that they tested it at. And now if I go anything longer than that or higher in elevation or longer that and down, let's say, if I'm on a rooftop down into a building, there's going to be derating. And if I'm really pushing the limits Maybe I needed a four ton. I needed all that four ton. You know, they're telling me, well, when they did the testing, it's only about like 30 feet of line set. And I have 140 feet of line set. Well, that number that they show in the catalog, it isn't true. It isn't accurate. And that's where the smoke and mirrors. And that's what I draw out of just making sure you're aware. Don't hang your hat on the catalog. The catalog can potentially get you in trouble. Everything we talk about is that blue little bubble right there, AHRI, all right? If you look at all our information in our catalog or, or by others, that you know, the Daikins of the world, the Mitsubishis, I don't care, the carriers, they all show performances at a fixed point in a, in a laboratory with the outdoor unit and the indoor unit equal in elevation, right? Think about this. And they have 24 feet, 7 inches of line set connected to it. So you think about that. Is that reality now in dealing with, you know, houses here on Long Island or in Jersey or wherever you're from. No, we don't have just under 25 feet of line set. 
because it says here I can do 230 feet. And they're usually ones above or ones below because of elevation. Commercial, if you're on a flat roof, we're doing a bagel store, let's say. So the outdoor unit's up on the roof, and then we drop, do a cassette maybe in the, you know, the counter area. Well, what is that elevation? You know, what's the extremes, you know? Or I'm going from the ground and then going up into a building. Maybe I got a third story attic that they're finishing. So there is D ratings with length of pipe and elevation. So these are things, if you need more help, you need some more, hey, give me some more information on that. We will share our information. You can feel free to call us after this presentation is over. But uh, be true and honest that, um, you know, to say, oh, I know everything about Fujitsu. Yeah, I, I, I don't believe that. There is so much stuff that I'm still learning but I just know where to find the information. That's the truth. That is what is not about always remembering everything. You can try. Sometimes it gets you in trouble because of things we forget. But the other thing is I always want to know I can find the information. That's the key. Key is to buy into the portal, buy into apps, because there's digital catalogs now in your phone, ability to put it on your phone. So, so this is the new look of our ductless wall mount, our singles. We have um, nine twelves and we do have 15s. This is replacing the RLS threes of the world, the RLS three Y, Y H's. So the Z I kind of made myself kind of have an associate association to remember LZ is what was to be used to be the three. Um, the LZ is our 33 plus SEER, um, 14 plus HSPF. And then you can see out of the box, non H, because I offer the standard L LZ eight, uh, S standard, that's standard, minus six heat pump, and then the LZAH, and anytime you see the letter H, you know it's a minus 15 heat pump. So, um, and then we have what we call replacing the RLF, I believe. The RLF platform is now becoming the LM. The RLFs were labeled mid tier. So the M in mid now became the LM. So that's what I kind of just, from my, my own mind sake, how do I associate? Which one did this replace again? Because again, too many acronyms, too many model numbers, and it's just an associate thing that I always kind of play uh, when new new product comes out. And it says there, you know, it models that replace the RLS three, the three Y. I always list it as the Mac Daddy. I mean, the the bells and whistles, the features, performances, the the uh, the access to rebates. I mean, that was you know, you want to go there. You want to sell. You know, you want to sell up and work back into a budget. You want to wow them with all the features, what we can do. The letter Y was built in Wi-Fi. Anything with the letter Z now, Z is three. The three became, it had to be Wi-Fi. There was no more options to be with or without. So the Z is Wi-Fi built in, all right? The Elm, I'm sorry, the Elm, the LM is Wi-Fi ready with a plug-in card. So that's that new platform where we're jumping from what we once saw a year ago, and now the new release, the LMs and the LZs of the world. These are single system offers, right? This is not a head that can be brought into a outdoor AOU with a Z in it, okay? These are specific. You buy a nine in, it has to be that nine out. The marriage, the mixing, right? Or, or the matching, I should say, not mixing here, all right? So LM series, LZ series, it's uh, probably a year now of uh, you know something that we've been talking about. Uh, I don't know how much we're selling of this, but truly it's the next go-to. This is where we're moving. We're shifting control strategies even and um, the, the new look of what Wi-Fi can be, all right? So smart device, yes, again, uh, we have the ability. And, and to be, be fair with anything Fujitsu and the Halcyon product and maybe throughout all Halcyon, or all Fujitsu, I should say, everything can be Wi-Fi enabled. We are 100% Wi-Fi ready with add-ons. Some of them, again, indicate it's already built in. Oh, can I get it without it? Well, you can buy the LM if you choose to, if you want to add it later, but you're going to lose some of the features, some of the performances. I mean, just to show you here, you know, 23.5 to 26 C, or depending on the nine or the 12, but then it goes from 23 to 33. So, you know, if there's a rebate worth a couple of thousand dollars, maybe based off of a ton, tonnage or whatever, you know, why am I going to go up to that next level? It sounds like it's more money. Yeah, but in the end result, you're paying less monthly. The efficiency is higher. You're getting a rebate to offset that cost 
to upgrade so you have less monthly uh, cost, you know, your, your bill that comes in uh, every year or every month, I should say, 30 days. So, you know, you got to spin that. You got to, you got to, you got to make them feel like, Hey, I'm, I'm here for your benefit. And I know the local rebates. I know the model qualifies and that's my focus. Why? Because of this, this, and this. And they kind of have, you know, you have that nice kumbaya with them and they look like, you know, you're the hero. You know, the other guy didn't mention anything about rebates, you know? So you always got to look uh, up, up on your, your competition. So whether you're selling it as a wholesaler to contractors you're trying to do conversion from displacing competitors. We got to know even the competitors as, as what they can offer and what they can do. Sears is a good, quick glimpse. Hey, what models are you doing? Oh, that's funny. You know, or well, not to say funny, but, you know, here's Fujitsu and, you know, we perform, outperform that. We have better Sear, HSPF, have bells and whistles features, you know. So it just kind of proof is in the pudding when you see what they're, they're engineered to do, the, the listing, you know. So. With some of them, like I said, the Mac Daddy, the L, the LZs, which replaced the RLS3s of the world, they have some really cool features. And if that's, uh, you know, some guy's a gadget guy, the homeowner is just all about coolness and just showing off. Well, here we go. We have an ESP uh, energy savings function. It's a motion sensor. You know, it's really in Fujitsu's mind. How do we save the end user more, um, you know, more efficiency? We, we, get, we save them more energy dollars is that this thing doesn't see motion for a 20 minute period. It's going to kind of set, reset the uh, set point for cooling um, and reset it for heating until someone like an alarm, you know, like alarm, an IR infrared or something in the room until it sees motion, it'll go right back to its original set point. So these are features. They're on the remote control. You turn them on, you can turn them off. So if you don't want them, but you can't buy it without it, you know, we went for the rebate. That's why we want the LZs now. And this is one of the features. And you should really understand what you're giving the end user with the remote control too. Have a discussion, know this particular model, not just SEER, HSPF, and things I want you to know about line set, but when you start looking at the remote control, what are all these buttons on it, you know? Maybe take a picture of one and show them and it's just kind of a brief review as to why you like this one. Or hey, spin it, I put this one in my house, you know, and these are the reasons why. So I was talking about controls. They're, they're starting to switch. We've always have been three wire platform in the Halcyon world. In the Fujitsu, we have the air stage, which is VRF. I think I, I didn't really mention that early, but they, they were always kind of transitioning to two wire controls. So we're gonna start to see that two wire platform coming down into our world. Um, and like I said, a lot of the controls are now gonna be uh, ordered separately. They're not going to come in the box. Uh, RGLXs of the world, that new acronym or model numbers are kind of where it is. Do we have, you know, standard units still with the remote coming out of the box? Yes. But as we start to transition and maybe things fall off or they phase out, well, then remotes are going to be something we have to be a little bit more in tune to. What their requests are, what the looks of it, where are we going to put them, what are the features perhaps, you know, because then the end result is we also have Wi-Fi. Now, if I said a model number, and let me see what the performance is here, this is not what I was thinking, but this is the true performance charts. This is called a design and technical, um, it's in a design technical manual, and this one is for, for heating, all right? Uh, I don't have a model number in front of me, but I've kind of looked at these charts over many years, and I can look at knowing, when I look at the catalog, Anything they talk about is at a 47 degree day on heating. So if you look at the catalog and you guys are, you know, thumbing through it and you go, wow, look at this nine. And it says, you know, uh, it doesn't tell you it's 47 degrees. It does, but you got to look really hard to find it. And they also base it on a 70 degree indoor temperature. So when you go to the catalog based off of whatever model, it's going to show you 23,900 BTUs. But you think, okay, it also has the letter H in it. Or I know it's a minus five heat pump. You might think that 20, just under 24,000 BTUs is that, I guess they show the performance at a minus five day, right? Why wouldn't they show it any other? So it leaves some, you know, almost like a bad taste in your mouth if you learn later. 
wow, I installed this because it said almost 24,000 BTUs, thinking at the dead of winter on a 14 degree day, or it said minus five, if it does 24,000 on a minus five day, it probably performs you know, even better on a 14 degree day. That's not the case. Anything in the catalog, AHRI, 47 outside temperature, indoor 70, that's fine. I like 70 in the, in the, uh, in the dead of winter, right? But in theory, that, that number is only for a 47 degree day. And we're going to make suggestions, and I wanna know in our winters, five, 14, a 23 degree day, what is this unit? And again, I don't show you the model number. I know this is the 15. I believe this is, yeah, this is the 15 model, okay? So if we have the 15 on a minus 15 day, that's pretty cold out. Fahrenheit dry bulb, right? We go over to maintaining 70 indoor temperature. This is still producing over 16,000 BTUs. These things are amazing in, in producing BTUs for heating, even in sub-degree temperatures. Again, and that sales role, it's a primary heat situation. I'm working in Pennsylvania. I'm, this is for Canada. This is for Alaska. These things are being tested and placed in areas that are just not reality for where we live here, at least on the coast of Northeast, right? We have pretty mild winter still. This year was a little bit of a, a challenge, a little dip, not the usual two, two years previous. But, you know, if I had a heat pump and I understood how it was supposed to be installed and it was critically charged and all the things that I need to do so it can perform, get it off the ground. That's you know some of the, the, the beauty of what they're giving us. This is the technology stuff in these new heat pumps. Really good performers, both heating and cooling. Now, um, this is just one chart. It's in the portal. It is not in the catalog. So if it's today you're hearing a lot about portal, 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 um, you need to see the, uh, the value and get registered, all right? Because there's really no other performance trust that I know of other than in what we call design and technical manuals. All right. This is all the after AHRI goes away and they give us a stamp and we can print our catalogs and state this, this, and this. So, um, again, just remember for heating, 47 with a 70 degree indoor temperature. Again, indoor testing equal, same, no difference in elevation and less than 25 feet of line set. And that's truly how they gave you that 23,900 uh, 23, uh, BTUs. That's truly what they test for AHRI stamps. That's not reality of everyday installs. All right. You see it says TC up there, right? TC, go down the bottom. Total capacity, 1,000 BTUs hourly. All right. IP, what is this 2.88 over there? Input power, kilowatts. Again, DC components really using far less energy, you know, the compressor, everything about the outdoor unit is geared to shift, use less energy. It's getting more and more demand and somehow it still reduces its uh, electrical usage. It's, it's uh, you know, it's like, wow, it kind of scratches your head and go, how does this, how does it do this, you know? But um, also get a little bit more familiar with remote controls. If you're at that coffee table, you're making them comfortable. You're making them comfortable after even you leave. They're aware they're going to get a remote control. Hey, with this model, there's features here. You know, these are some of the things that you're now going to be interacting with that unit, the Fujitsu. You know, I don't know how far as you go. Do you leave a phone number? You know, maybe you just want to walk away and not have anything to do with it after it's done. But for me, I'm always that guy, right? So I'm going to be that guy. Call me up. If you have any questions? You know, even after today, hey, Ann, I got a question about the portal. Are you on? Yeah. All right. So I'll get on. Where are you? And I'll start clicking where you go. And I'll go, okay, click over here. So I'm all about trying to make you see visually as much as I can if we can't be in the same room or whatever the case may be. So, but there's features on here. And we should really be aware of what those things are as they're being given the remote control from the installer. All right, we're done. Thank you. Here's your remote control. Is he reviewing this with the uh, end user? I mean, who is? So they're left to their own, um, you know, to, to figure it out. And sometimes they can push a button that might trigger like a, a nuisance call or a lack of heat call. And then, you know, what do we know about sending a tech out there? So it is a process from start to finish, from sales, installation, to even the tech 
because there's a things that we just walk on by and we never take or look at even the remote control. It's good stuff. We're selling it for features. We should know what they are and, and uh, make sure they're aware of it. All right. So again, we do have an operation manual that is for the end user. It should be left with them. You know, it should be left with them. It comes out of the box of the indoor unit, wherever the remote com comes with, there's a manual and that should be left for the end user to review and know exactly what they have in their hand when they're communicating with the indoor unit. Here's 115 volt. Again, just be aware, it's a watered down budgetary. It is a fixed, I can't use that indoor head with any other outdoor unit than the 115 outdoor. So uh, the ASU 9 RL2s, and we also offer the 12 RL2s. Not bad in performance, just know it is a little bit, you know, um, not so pizzazz with all the features. It's, again, I have an issue. I don't know how you feel. Check the, the, the panel is one of the first things you might want to make of aware. Hey, make yourself aware of what I have what count, kind of power source? What's in the panel, electrical panel I'm talking about? Are there any room for breakers? Can I offer a 230 volt? Or do I, you know, well, I want to get in and out and make a quick sale here, and I can only offer 115 volt. You know, the 9 and the 12, performance-wise, they do pretty well. But you know what? I'm not going to wait for an electrician to come and upgrade their panel. I'm not going to come back, you know, next tax season. So just be aware, again, what your low-hanging fruit is. And sometimes it really starts with what do I have in the electrical panel to offer? Okay, again, you can see cooling operation range 15, heating operation 15. So again, not so high performance, but very, very uh, budget approach, okay? A little bit about the remote control, not to kill it, but again, everything's just less. It's just kind of like a real plain Jane approach, the nine and 12, 115 volt. Again, operation manuals for the end user. What do these buttons mean? What if I push this, what happens? You know, the swing, the set for the louvers, all those things that change direction, Fahrenheit, Celsius, right? Here's the RLF1W, again, mid-tier uh, mid uh, heat pump, everything with the letter R, reverse cycle heat pump. So we don't have cooling only models anymore, nothing with the letter C. They might be out in an installation somewhere and, hey, I got to replace a C. What do I do, Ant? Well, you replace it with the R. And if you truly want to make it a cooling only, guess what you do? In the remote control, there are defaults from the factory called function settings. So you have the ability to make any one of my uh, heat pumps a heating only, or you can make it a cooling only with the function settings in the remote control. And where do you find this information? In the installation manual, not the owner or operation manual. This is not for the end user, not for the homeowner. This is for the professional. Either uh, if you want to consider you sales on that role, or if you want to do, you know, maybe your own operator, like I said, from start to finish, or the installer, or even the technician. They should all be aware, everybody in the, in the um, food chain of Fujitsu here, all the way up from sales to technician. Function settings are key. It makes problems go away. Here's the 18 ASU RLF. Down at the bottom, you see the outdoor unit has the letter X. X means extended line sets. R, reverse cycle heat pump, everything with the letter R. All right, Sears a good, HSPF again, and can deliver 100% of the nameplate heating to five degrees. So, you know, we're testing, we're, 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 we're honoring what we state in our performances, you know? Again, if it's something less than five degrees, it'll just shut off, the answer is no. It will continue to run, it just has a derating. It just can't produce in that cold, cold temperature. It wasn't engineered to do that whether it be the software, the compressor, whatever it is, uh, the surface area, maybe the coil itself. So, you know, there are differences in why we have so many different models. And uh, if the application needs, uh, maybe we can be a little bit creative and figure out what model will actually produce even high, high BTUs at say minus 15, perhaps, you know, sounds unrealistic for where we live, but yeah. And this is again, rated to a minus five. So 100% at five, and it's rated with some lesser performance to minus five, but never does it just stop. You know, it's uh, now minus six. I'm taking a, I'm taking a nap. You know, it'll just keep running and running and running, and it'll just deplete uh, its output on the indoor coil. All right. So you can see that red line to five degrees. There's your 
and then that blue line drifts down to where the minus five is and just shows you a D rating. All right, this is kind of cool if you get into some really um, critical cooling applications. It does have the letter H in it, so I'm going to say something here. These are really performed for server rooms, but we have a minus five cooling capacity, which is huge. Could be catering halls if we ever get back into those. It could be a church where a lot of people are gathering if we ever get back into those. But again, the point is, what are the extremes that we need to make sure we deliver comfort? Is it 400 people in the room? You know, is it uh, a server room that has high BTU requirements? You know, this is also a heating device. You want to make sure, again, remote control stuff, function settings, lock out that heating, make it a cooling only. When it's a critical cooling uh, application, you always want to make sure we don't ever allow someone to maybe put this into a heating mode. Not a good day for a server room if it's starting to heat up, all right? But good performance, this is a 30. This is ASU 30RLE, engineer, the letter E for engineer, H, outdoor unit, AOU, OU, outdoor unit, letter H, minus 15 heat pump. It doesn't have something crazy for a minus five cooling, but it is, um, it is pretty a, a big, big performer, both heating and cooling even in sub degrees. All right, ESP, again, some of the features built in. Um, it's a double stack outdoor unit, so please be aware of that. The outdoor unit is larger, but it has some nice key things for server rooms, like with 100% redundancy. So it has a lead lag, it has the ability for serviceability. You know, for 100% um, redundancy, I can have one unit down because I'm doing service or maintenance, and the other one is still carrying the load. It does have load shifting, so where it starts to ramp up, if it can't keep up, then the other one will, will kick in and satisfy the load. As servers get older, they start to overheat. So there's indications sometimes maybe, you know, we did our job and we're actually carrying the load because their, their computers are starting to age or cycle out and they start to overheat. So, you know, it's a specification. An engineer might say, I want 100% redundancy. If you don't have a spec or you're getting called in to do a server room, you know, I used to do them like at 70% redundancy. I'd always put in two, never just one. If you do one and that thing fails or it needs maintenance, well, that means they're probably shutting down business. Their servers potentially will overheat and they'll go into an alert or maybe they'll start to fail. So we don't want to be in that world with uh, our customers and what they can't do. Let's say they have a global you know, network. They're a global company and they have server rooms like most of the companies today do. And we're there to provide and keep everything up and running and cool. Um, so just be aware. If you have any questions with server rooms, it's a pretty interesting application, and I've done a couple in my in my uh, experiences. So, all right. So here it is: simple wiring, one to one. Again, lead lag going on and on and on. Backup operation supporting again simultaneously running, carrying the load as it grows more, ramping up one. You know, realizing I need to kick on the other one. It does it automatically if we set it up that way. You can sell it as a single, but you can do the redundancy, which is kind of nice. Daisy chain, just three wires, standard wire, nothing fancy. Here's a remote. This is the newer touch um, uh, touchscreen backlit. It does have the option to show room temperature. Again, still focusing on this was the first offering with the ASU 30 RLE. Um, that, that was the brand new platform at the time. And uh, I thought it was great. You know, I was hoping this was going to cross over into all the other um, really kind of hideous looking wall mounted remotes we have, but um, good stuff. Now, please be aware if you are in that um, position of walking a job indoor to outdoor, the line sets. So we're going to start talking about line sets distance in here. And it's really, really important to know what our model to model minimums are and model to model maximums are. Again, always with the maximum, I can make a statement, but no the D rating, they can be a performance, you know, we're going to give up some performance. And we have two shorter line sets, we can actually start damaging compressors. So it, you really do have a bit of laying out the installation when you're walking a job. Where is the indoor unit? What wall are we putting it on? Okay, where's the outdoor unit? Well, we don't want it just outside this wall where the indoor unit is. Okay, well, maybe you should show me where you want it, because this really starts to play the factors as to what model I'm going to offer you. You know, the BTU load of the room is small, and now you're asking me to go distances that this smaller outdoor unit cannot possibly be installed. So those are those crossing, you know, you know, dotting your I's and crossing your T's when it comes to understanding how the Fujitsu 
really needs to be uh, handled even at the sales right from the beginning. All right. <clears throat> Here's singles, non-ducted or uh, non-wall mount. Again, universal. We have a ceiling 36 still available, still around. It's kind of been a workhorse for Fujitsu. They never got rid of it. It's kind of a real antiquated look, more industrial. Um, but uh, it's still there. It's a big, big uh, to do. So 165 feet, 98 foot rise, that's elevation. And whenever we talk about length or elevation, we're talking about distance in, in height. Uh, the pipe is flare to flare one way. That's how we measure that 165. And how do I do this again? What was the, how do I measure my line sets? Is it there and back? No, it's one way. Flare connection outdoor to flare connection indoor. What is that? Measure it. And now you know where you sit with how the performance or if it's in specs, you know, what was engineered to do. Neat stuff. Here's that older remote control that, God, if you open that cover up, it just confuses either me. That screen isn't backlit. It's really dark. You don't know if you're in cooling. You don't know if you're in heating. And, uh, you know, it's just, it, it's time to go. It really is, in my opinion, with the Fujitsu standard wall mount uh, controller. Uh, different wall, uh, different uh, wireless, the IRs, the infrared, the, hand, you know, the wireless ones. You have different uh, controllers for that. So they've kind of improved with different features, different model changes. So model to model, you don't know exactly uh, what the remote is. The catalog can help you with that as well. Um, this is a new addition as a low or a floor mount, as opposed to, again, aesthetics in people's homes, right? You have to be able to dodge and weave when, well, I don't want that thing up on the wall, you know? Um, can you give me duct work? I mean, sure, we can do an ARU, but are you familiar with this one? This is called the AGU. It's a floor mount. It's down low. Oh, all right. So my eyes aren't drawn up, but they're down and I have furniture and, you know, I have um, things that kind of make it blend. It's below the window, you know, so like they show you here, older houses have older heating systems. That takes up a lot of real estate. It doesn't deliver a lot of comfort. It certainly doesn't give you air conditioning, that old radiator, as much as I say I like them, you know. But truth be told is maybe an ARU is taking, you know, a 1930s bungalow and really turning it into a really efficient uh, all year round comfort, you know, living space. So uh, AGUs come in 9, 12s, and 15s. We do have the standard non-H, so it comes minus five. You, let, you add the letter H, the outdoor unit changes, and then we have a minus 15 offering with this as well. So, you know, minus 15 for our area, you're adding a couple hundred bucks, and I don't know if you're just doing it for the sake of saying we can do it, or they're really harping on heating. You know, if you go back to this one, and you don't think minus five is enough to carry the load where we live here, and not really, well, I'm, I'm installing a, I'm installing a 15 because uh, I don't trust the nine. Because you're looking at the catalog again. You got to get to the true data design and technical manual, and that will tell you what it will produce even on that minus 15. You'll be amazed by the BTU outputs on these things if you really look at the true engineered data, the, the uh, specs. Neat stuff. We also offer a ducted. This is a low static. What's nice and unique about Fujitsu is they have the ability to roll, which is typically horizontal, like you see in the upper left corner, and we can roll it 90 degrees and make it vertical. So it allows us for more flexibility in our installation. It does have an L-shaped condensate pan, so it does go from a condensate pump in a horizontal. Um, it's a lift pump, inches of lift, about 28 inches, um, and then goes to gravity. So just know what your challenges are. Um, Condensation to me is some of the hardest things to always uh, secure that we're getting out of the building. You know, we don't want it producing or dripping somewhere and we have mold issues or whatever, someplace hidden in the wall. So condensation to me is like an atmospheric, uh, you know, flu product. You know, we have limitations of what we can do. Whenever we're doing a gravity drain, we're utilizing a pitch. So how do I get it, you know, to an elevation and then out from there? And that's what happens with these little small condensate pumps that they offer. It's inches of lift, not feet. So play nice with what is on board, or you might have to go to a third party. Again, the space will determine. I'm in a building. I'm in the middle of a building. There's no drains. There's no slop sinks. Where do and how do I get rid of the condensation? Are you going to dump it into the greenery, the plants? You know, like who's going to be responsible when things start overflowing? So the truth is sometimes a third um, you know, buy others, uh, 
condensate pump will be required. Again, this is showing you this is what comes with it as standard. That's that old look uh, wall mounted controller. Maybe that's not what they want. And we have options to do uh, maybe a wireless controller as well. We do offer a seven, a nine, and a 12 in a smaller cabinet. And as we need larger BTUs in the 18 or the 24, the physical size of the cabinet will change. So just know where we're thinking about putting these things. If you're walking the space, you know, I'm always going, well, who, how's the next guy getting to this to repair it? How's the next guy getting to it, uh, you know, to service it even? So <clears throat> it's going to be tucked away up in a sheetrock ceiling and never be seen again. Well, that's not a good scenario because things mechanically do at times break down. So please allow for accessibility, whether it be a panel or maybe an attic space or a knee wall or whatever it is that you're faced with. Think about what the next next to do is. How do we get to it later? All right. So this is a little side picture of it. And not to really kill this, this is for another topic, but it's a gravity drain. The top portion here is where the condensate pump leaves. It'll give you 28 inches from here, or it'll give you about 31 inches from the from the drain pan. That's where this gravity. It's an L-shaped pan, so it's like this and this, and that's when you roll it. That corner becomes still, whether it be horizontal gravity, you can do that if you don't want to use the pump at all, or you can roll it and then do a L-shaped pan, and that's the low side in the corner for your uh, vertical application. 33 inches. Sorry, I thought it was 31. 33 inches and 28 from what I call the snout, that little plastic um, discharge port, okay? So good stuff, they're, they're, they're pretty cool. They got pretty creative. This is over at the factory and they were showing you like, you know, having this really unfinished looking piece of equipment, like in the living space. And then they came up with this idea of, you know, putting like a, a an old kind of convector enclosure Again, free air is key, understanding discharge and return air. So it's just a matter of how creative we can get with some of the stuff. This is kind of gone passe because we now have the AGUs, which is that more finished floor mount. But again, ARUs go up to 24,000 BTUs. It just might need to be a large BTU capacity and then we have to make it look aesthetically pleasing. So, you know, again, options, options, options. This is the new RGLX. This is a medium static. Uh, the previous one was limited. Um, there is a default from the factory and that has to be changed depending on how much ductwork we put in front of the blower and also how much ductwork we put on the return of the blower. Static is a funky thing. We kind of list it as a positive static and as a negative static. Well, it's still static regardless if it's negative or positive. So those two sides of the blower have to be able to overcome resistance of all the ductwork. And on this one uh, over here, these standard ARUs, they're very, very low static uh, motor and blower combinations. So, you know, we get pretty creative. We start pushing the envelope and all of a sudden we don't have airflow and we gave up the comfort because we didn't realize, you know, using flex duct as opposed to smooth rigid, you know, there are things and factors as to the ease and convenience of why we streamline things because it's easier, it's quicker, it's cheaper. And then all of a sudden we give up something, it's called comfort and people start complaining and we just start panicking. We don't know what to do. You know, we didn't even know there was a function change in the remote control. Default from the factory is minimum. It's so minute. And, um, you know, we have conversations all the time, myself and Rick, when it comes to these ducted ones, and all of a sudden we just go, hey, so did you change the function setting? And the conversation gets really quiet and one-sided because I'm like, oh, you didn't read the manual. You have to change the function settings for the static pressure. What's that? Well, like I just explained, the blower and the motor are engineered to overcome X. X is static. So here we go. Now we have a medium static offering, RGLX, from 12 to 48,000. Notice the two larger outdoor units again. The challenges with those, they're double stacked. They're, they're going to be a little taller. So, um, but we do have single, these are single offerings from a single ton all the way up to four ton. So this is a unique duct work because looking in the off, the takeoff on that. It's a unique rectangle. So, you know, we have um, sheet metal shops. People have their own. They can be creative and make a transition. 
but just know what we're needing to play nice with these low profile, medium static ducted offerings with Fujitsu. All right, really good specification. Look at the line sets here, sounds amazing, but know what you're giving up. You're derating as you go further and further and further. Decibel levels are, are small, quiet. And here we just kind of li list the static pressure um, from the single, the ton, the single ton. Uh, and we're kind of breaking it down here. Just know the cabinet for the one ton is that it's, 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 it's fixed. We share the same size cabinet for the 18, 24, and 30. Um, the height and the depth is the same. It's the length from left to right that does change because, again, more surface area, more BTU capacity. Then we jumped into 36, the 42, and 48. Again, the height and the depth is the same as the two offerings of the lesser BTUs, but the length left to right is what changes. It has to. You need more surface area, okay? But here we show you our standard low static, just to give you some numbers. It maxes out on the smaller offering, the BTUs, 0.36 order gauge, 0.36. And if I got ductwork that's more than 0.36, there is no way I'm going to move the air and deliver comfort. So now you can see the max on these are 0 0.80, 0 0.80. Notice the larger only goes to 0.72. So again, don't cookie cut Fujitsu. Don't always assume it's what model. What model are we talking about? Forever and ever and ever in conversations, whether it be in training, in class, over the phone, you guys want to rattle everything before you forget. He's like, you, you regurgitate everything in the first 30 seconds of a phone call. I'm like, uh, uh, and I'm trying to interrupt. So I go, you got to tell me something. What model are we talking about? Because that's where it all starts. I cannot start to help you unless you tell me what model you're having issues with, what models you have questions about, because of features, it depends. Those are all what I list as depend questions. What model are you talking about? Because model to model have different features. They have different functions. They have different performances, different SEERs, different HSPFs, different line sets. This is the stuff I'm trying to draw to the surface, even at your level. Again, you're in a sales position. Oh, I don't need to know this. Yes, you do. You know why? Because you're walking the job site. You're maybe making a sketch where your installers, based off of a conversation you have with the homeowner, they're insisting the outdoor unit has to be here. OK, and these are the reasons why you are ground zero with getting this right. And there's more opportunities to screw this up because of an installer's mindset. Right. And then you send a tech there and he goes, I can't fix this because I, I know the line sits only 66 feet and they installed it 100 feet away. Because back at the sales conversation, the homeowner said, well, this is where I want the outdoor unit to be. And maybe you didn't know any better. Maybe you thought your installers can just jack up the refrigeration and we can make it happen. And when it fails miserably and actually you're killing the compressor because it's now overcharged, these are rule of thumbs we grabbed with a bag of crap from R22 and we thought it could work with R410A. This is not the case here, especially with Fujitsu. It's an inverter DC driven critical charge piece of equipment based off of specific specifications. Everything about that compressor was engineered model to model. All right, I said enough about that. Compact cassettes, again, access, access, sheetrock sheet rock world. Um, maybe I had clearances. They want to put it in the living room. How do you get to it later? There is nothing from below that we have access to get to the parts and pieces, the control wire, the power wire, our flare connections, our condensate pump. So really very limited, very um, drop ceiling friendly, uh, maybe on the second story sheetrock with an attic above. So just know how these things need to be installed before you make a suggestion. The, ob the objections are, hey, I hear you, you like the look of it, but in this application, unless you're gonna allow me to put an access panel and we might need a carpenter to do some re a framing here, like imagine putting in a, you know, a drop um, stairwell for attic access. There's typically some reframing, you know, that's kind of a given. But this big thing is going into, you know, standard joist bay application. We're gonna have to cut, reassure, you know, reshore up and make a hole so we can put this thing in. This is kind of the same thing. It's a two by two square in traditional frame construction where I have zero access to. 
So not that I don't want to sell these. I just want to make sure, you know, that we're picking the right applications. Again, you see what comes standard up here. We show you we have the standard wired remote control, and we do have options again listing listed in the catalog. You know, if you're familiar with the catalog, as you start thumbing through, okay, here's the offering for compact cassettes. It shows you the indoor, outdoor, and the remote control that comes standard. And down at the bottom will say optional accessories, and that's where you'll find. Hey, what do I have as an option if asked they want something other than that remote control? I don't want that thing on the wall. That's why I'm going with a cassette. You offered me this thing on the wall. It's my art gallery. I don't want nothing on the wall. So that's what comes standard. They start putting this thing on the wall, and like all of a sudden, we got to stop. You know, why are you putting this thing on the wall? I told the salesman, well, this is what comes in the box. Well, we had a discussion about this wired remote. He kept saying he can sell me a wired remote and not have to use that hard wire controller. So again, know your position, know where you are. The objections are, it could be aesthetics, it could be a functionality. It could be the reverse. It comes with a handheld wireless, but they're concerned about that thing getting lost, thrown away, someone walking off with it. So now do I have options to now upsell them and give them a hard wire controller that's mounted to the wall. There's no way someone can take it, leave with it. You know, we do bed and breakfast, we do hotels. So, you know, we need to understand the availability to how to satisfy their needs also, not just ours, not just ours. All right, here's a larger RGLX. They listed as C cassette. So that's a three by three cassette now, big, big producers, 18, 24, 36, 30, 36, 42. Um, and actually they have a 48, I believe, on this one as well. This slide is a little bit skewed. Oh, I see what it says there. The 42 and 48 has that much larger line set, the letter X in it, 240 feet, one way. Pretty impressive. The standard standard is only 164. So minus five heat pumps. Again, information just gathering. The catalog is great. It's limited. It just has some, um, it does have its own purpose, but I can give you some really cool stuff with apps now. Wow. All right. Um, multi multi position here again in the green section, starting with sevens. We do have smaller offerings, wall mounts, ASUs, ducted ARUs and, and compact cassettes, AUUs. And we do have the AGUs, which is a floor mount. So again, from left to right, B2 capacity, small to large. And then we deal with the outdoor units, anything with the letter Z zoning. It's a multiple ported outdoor unit for indoor connections. Uh, we have to play nice because we have to have a mix match capacities and what we're allowed. So the catalog does have those charts for us as well. In some of the outdoor units in the 18, 24 and 36, we do have the letter H and those are minus 15 heat pump outdoor units. The 45, which is a five headed monster as I call it, it does not offer the letter H. So that is a five degree heating uh, heat pump, all right, rated five degrees. So again, offering of what we have, all indoor types can be um, part of a mix match combination. We just have to play nice with the BTU capacity or what the loads inside are, you know, uh, for the rooms, heat gain, heat losses, we have the ability to do that. So we can pick and choose the proper install. And we have to make sure those combinations of two or more is proper for that outdoor unit. We have limitations. The first one we offer is an 18, right? An AOU 18. So how many options can we offer with a two-headed uh, application? It's limited. BTUs is a BTU. The outdoor unit can only deliver 18,000 BTUs. So just to kind of look quick snapshot here, but here it is, you know, here's the AOU. All the options are there. We can do wall mounts. We can do, uh, um, I'm sorry, ducted. We can do floor mounts and we can do mini cassettes. Now notice the yellow band, right? And they use these color blocks. Like I said, they do a pretty good job with color coding. And um, you know, there are things here that we need to pay attention to when we are selecting one over the other. We might need to go to a 24, but still do a, do a two-headed monster. Well, the 18 says it's, it does two units, right? But you're limited on its product offering, BTU capacities. So notice everything here, 18 always has to have two. You can't do one head and add one later. You have to always have two indoor heads connected. And here are the 24, AOU 24, 
it's two or three. This does have a third port. So we have three sevens, we have three nines, you know, we have different combinations, we have charts to show that. And here's a 36. Again, two to four. Always start with two heads. You cannot have a single head on a Z model outdoor unit. And no different here with the 45. Um, there are some other nuances about maybe for the installer where what size go to A port, B, C, D, and E. There's a rate that's kind of a D rating in the largest BTU capacity unit to the smallest one, and why it has to be on the A, the B, and the C. And that's just a given from the factory. So we play nice rules and we won't get burned. So, so where do I find all this information? The full line catalog for sure. There's a lot of information here in respect to, again, AHRI. So we're limited to what they're actually showing us for performances because of what they tested to show a listing. It's not the true performances. That's in the design and technical manual on the portal, right? The portal, the portal, the portal. It is a login. You need to have a registered login. It's just keeping the homeowners out, basically. We're the gatekeepers. And we'll be more than happy to help you and show you with that. This might be a little bit older slide, but I just always want to point out when you're dealing with an outdoor unit that has a letter Z in it, this is your shopping cart right here. These are the only things you can pick and choose when looking at the combinations down here. Okay, so let's use the AOU 18 here. Notice there is no 15. Certainly, I could pick and choose any one of the 15s up there, but Fujitsu has tested and confirmed and guaranteed. If you did a 715, I can't guarantee it's going to work. So please pay attention to what these color blocks represent. Color represents a BTU capacity. And notice the color of a 15 is like that purple. If you go to the AOU 18, do you see anything other than a green, a yellow, and call it brown? There is no orange, there is no light blue, and there is no purple. So I never want to go on a job site where someone is just not paying attention to the details. And I walk on and I go, yeah, I see the problem. Like, how do you know? I've been here for 30 seconds. And, well, I know that 18 is a 7, a 9, or a 12. Never do I want to see a 15 on it. Well, the guy connected to it, yeah, it's true. The line set will connect, but the computer, everything about the algorithm, everything about the way things you know, work capacity-wise, it might start to have intermittent service. So just pay attention to this, uh, this information here. Really important. And the little stuff too, these little asterisks right here, as you see, the little asterisks are notes and they can get you in trouble pretty quickly if you don't pay attention to at the bottom of the page. Gotta read the notes, can't say it enough. Really, really important. Always read the fine print because it tells you this is needed. This is what you must also have. Without this, you are not gonna get this done. You're gonna slow the delay. You might try to install and be creative and you're really not, you're really not doing uh, right by the install and you become the warranty. So you become the warranty when you don't pay attention to the details. All right, we do have allowable combinations. We do have the H here. Everything about the H is only pertaining to the outdoor unit. The indoor heads are no different because I have an H in the outdoor model. The AOU H minus 15, everything is unique about it. It's bigger, the materials, we have a drain pan heater, uh, the wires, everything about the size of the compartments. It's more robust to be operational in those sub-degree minus 15 temperatures. So again, letter H minus 15. It sounds really impressive, but I'm not really sure how much more it produces in BTUs. And, and realistically, where we live, what would you say the coldest design day of the year should be for us where we live? You know, and then ask yourself, well, this goes to minus five. And now we understand the design and technical manual. And I see the true BTU performances. Yeah, I mean, I'm adding money to a bill. I might be, I might be, you know kind of um, leaving the conversation because I'm just adding too much money to the, to, the, to the bill. You know, pay attention to what actual Fujitsu is engineered to do. Standard, five degrees, the, the nine model, doesn't mean 9,000, it means something far more, especially in heating. Minus five heat pumps, oh, I just don't trust it enough, I gotta go minus 15. You're adding more money, so it might just, um, you know, you might not get the job, so. We do have some singles, larger 1824s, and then we have the 30, again, anything with the letter H, 
and this is an older slide, and they were really pointing out the 36. We have the 18Z, the 24Z, and the 36Z, and those are all with the H, and those are minus 15 pumps. These are rated as Energy Star. That's what it is. The 36, I guess, as opposed to the 24 and the 18 and the Z models. So neat stuff. It's a little bit of repetition at this point showing you these slides, but just get tuned in tune to maybe what they know. You're in a conversation, you're in the sales role, in the in the, the contractor's role, you know, talking about SEER and HSPFs and performances and comparing us to the by others, you know, they're really comfortable, they know model numbers, their guys are in tune to the installs. You know, we can make them all comfortable with some training and just kind of want to show them the better side of maybe why Fujitsu is uh, a better piece of equipment, not only from the end user, let's call it the homeowner, business owner, to even a contractor. All right. So neat stuff. Really, really flexible. I, it's just, this is not a seasonal item anymore. This is year round, right? Notice what it says, group controls. We have the ability to daisy chain with one wired controller up to 16 indoor units. They're acting as one zone though. So one wire controller, anything you see group controls here is upwards of 16 indoor heads. So you have a large open sales you know, area, you have a, I don't know, call it a catering hall, a restaurant or whatever. You literally can have one controller, lessens your labor. You know, maybe you want to do like a two-way uh, two switch. I can have a controller on one side and 80 feet away, I can have a controller over there. Those are op opportunities. Remote sensors, again, we have a lot of features to one, add more additional comfort. Um, just interacting, the interface, so to speak, with the end user. Maybe there's just too much um, technology. So we have simple remote controls as opposed to a lot of buttons and a lot of uh, icons and they can't see it anyway. So we want to simplify maybe for an older couple, you know, someone who's getting on an age and eyesight or it's just too much. Like I still got the flip phone going. So, you know, you kind of line it up and say, well, I can offer this, this or this. But anytime you do that, it's an upsell. These are addition. These are accessories. So. Um, like I said, if I had a wired remote control, I possibly can offer a wireless, you know, so it can go in two ways. One, what comes standard, or I can reverse it from wire to wireless. This is a nice picture, just kind of showing an overall offering. There's quite a few. It's just not one and done. Model again to model. What comes standard? What now soon will be, hey, I better get in tune to offer what the new stuff is. And here we have a um, the new interface for Wi-Fi. So uh, neat stuff, neat stuff. And we just need to be a little bit more aware of the new platforms. We are partnered with a company called Intesis Homes. It's nothing new to Fujitsu. Uh, we're getting involved with this new uh, layout. So these are easy plug and play. They have the UART, the UART port, CN64. So out of the box, if I have the U port, I can literally plug this in. And now it's kind of up and running. So the simplicity of adding Wi-Fi to even uh, the newer platforms are going to make it like a no-brainer. Why wouldn't you at this point? You know, so neat stuff. But um, yeah, this is called the, the AC Cloud. So there's a new app. It's still in Tesis Home, but they call it the AC Cloud. And again, ability to control your, your Fujitsu, your, your space, your home from anywhere in the globe. Kind of cool. We've gotten more controls coming from the air stage down, the VRF side. We have um, Modbus, so home BMS uh, platforms, you know, business or building management systems, and have the ability now to uh, play nice with our Fujitsus with building management. We have uh, two platforms something called Modbus and something called BACnet. So again, brand new offerings with uh, Fujitsu this year. And then we go into accessories, accessories, and more accessories. Um, really got to pay attention to the back of the catalog if you want to learn more about what you can offer with your customers. All right. And also the design and technical manual. There are other points of references, uh, not the flash, not the colored pictures, but once you kind of get one platform, you know, you master the catalog, you know how to utilize the color bands, single multiple accessories and all that. And then you really get into the more detailed information. So, and wind baffles, wind baffles is something we never had. 
Um, it was something certainly that could have been add on by others, but Fujitsu now has a whole lineup of wind baffles. It's not an everyday item. It's more specific to a high wind scenario where there's wind billing, maybe the wind is forcing that the propeller outdoor unit to go in reverse. And now we have a call and that wind is still putting enough resistance that I can't maybe overcome the inertia where that motor needs to kind of, um, you know, get going up and going. So a wind baffle is an add on feature for some high wind scenarios. So we now have that in our product offering. Rick, how are we doing, by the way? Doing all right. Quiet group this morning. Quiet group. All right. Well, no questions. That's good by me. So why Fujitsu? Again, because all year round comfort, anything electric in a home, we really start reducing what standard equipment, um, non, you know, non inverter pieces of equipment. Uh, and we can really start uh, showing some product, um, some some reduction in their energy costs. So we're in the comfort and energy business, and Fujitsu covers both sides of that for us. In addition to that efficiency, again, check out local rebates. Know your utilities. Know what they're offering. You know, what are their requirements? What model can I start focusing on this afternoon as I go out and I do a sales call? All right. Again, multi-zone, anything with the letter Z, zoning, we can do multiple application, different styles based off of BTU capacities. Always concern about the mix match, never over connect capacities to an outdoor unit. We list exactly what's allowed. We give you the box to play in, you know, so play nice with that. Again, year round, there is no season. Uh, I have many people tell, oh, it's that time of the year. I was like, no, it really isn't. There is no time of the year for a heat pump now. The technology isn't what heat pumps were 10, 15 years ago. So these things are major, major uh, performers in both heating and cooling, regardless of the season, right? Think about this. I got someone who's plagued with an ailment. Maybe it's uh, emphysema. You know, all year round, they need to have air conditioning. Well, what outdoor unit that you know can still produce a, a high BTU even when it's 10 degrees outside? You know, so these are those factors where I say it's like it's not just a season. It could be an application, a critical charge, or, uh, a server room, large gatherings, you know, churches, catering halls, uh, you know, um, churches again, you know, in that respect of where or it could be a health issue, you know, the looks of it. They don't want to see the thing on the wall. Well, we can do something up in the attic. Not a cassette. I can do a ducted, you know. We had the low static, the medium static. We now have the multi-position. So a lot to offer in our traditional, um, you know, timber stick constructions. Very quiet, indoor and outdoor. I always joke around and say, like, you know, like, like uh, fences make for good neighbors, so does quiet air conditioning, both indoor and outdoor. You know, applications, you're limited by your creativity. You're only limited by your creativity when it comes to a Fujitsu and applications. I might need to add more, maybe an outdoor unit here and there because of limitations of line sets. But the truth be told is we really don't have many corners we get painted into anymore when it comes to Fujitsu. Whether we gravitate maybe outgrowing and we get into some maybe VRF, you know, we have the ability to go from a Halcyon into air stage, right? We do have something, Air stage is typically a three-phase piece of equipment, more commercial. They have something called a J-series, that is VRF platform, but single phase. Very doable for some large residential applications. More capacity to add more indoor units with one outdoor. So far, you know, it's kind of trimming that budget, fitting within their budget because so they know how to drift from one platform to the other. All right. So applications all day long. Be creative. Know what your challenges are with a cassette. I need access. Do you have access? Is it an attic? Is it a crawl space? How do I, is there an access panel here? You know, restaurants, you see them every day now. Very standard wall mounts, typically on an outside wall because it's a gravity drain. Do you want to add a condensate pump to this? You can all day long. Know what you have the ability to do. Again, hotels, Yes, we can do this above the closet. There's a drop ceiling. We can do this with standard supply returns ductwork. Very, very common, very, very popular. There's no reason why we can't get out there and really do some damage, even with this new multi-position air hammer. It's huge. 
right? So this is what it is, indoor, outdoor, low voltage. You can check your, your panel. What do you have to offer? Are you limited to a single breaker because there's no other room in the breaker panel? You know, are you waiting for them, the electrician? Are you, do you have the electrician? You know, are you kind of bringing your guy in? Say, well, you know, to do this, we'll have to do that. I got a guy. Or they're going to say, well, my cousin, and now you're waiting for the cousin before you can even sell your Fujitsu. So just know what you can do with the power coming into the, to the building. All right? There are choices. Clearances, clearances, airflow, airflow, elevation. We need to get these things off the ground. Drainage at best for winter applications. These are really good BTU producers for heating, but we need to get them off the ground. No more pads. They say two inches, two or more. We use wall brackets. Again, snow loads. You know, oh, I'm concerned, the vibration, then put it on a freestanding. You can put a pad and then put a freestanding, you know, uh, platform. You know, and this way we can do both elevation and getting above a snow load. The other thing you hear, living on Long Island, we have flood zones. So, you know, really understanding what we like to do and make sure there's some longevity. I mean, like I always joke around, I like selling more stuff. So if you put it on the pad down in Freeport on Long Island here, chances are three times a year, you're going to get a 10 block radius that's flooding. And all of a sudden we're selling a lot more Fujitsu's in Freeport. So just play nice with understanding what a heat pump requirements are in the dead of winter in potential for snow loads and also drainage, defrost cycle, get them off the ground. Again, people can be very creative. Aftermarket, third party offering, you know, people are making their own. You know, I look at the one in the dead, in the bottom, in the middle, it's on a roof, it's on wood. Well, wood tends to start rotting, it starts to break, it starts to, now also an outdoor unit is not level, compressor oil and all, you know, so there are factors as to one type of material versus another. You know, maybe that's in Arizona, barely gets any rain, you know, but, you know, whatever the case may be. So just understand the importance of getting them off a pad. Elevate them, at least for drainage. All right. Talk about line sets. Please, please, please be aware. We have a minimum model to model. It can change. We have a minimum. We have a maximum. This model states no more than 66 feet. All right. I do have a minimum requirement, at least to have 10. Again, how do I measure? Flare to flare one way, not there and back. We talk about elevation here, max height difference. Height difference, not length of pipe. From that flare, if I drop the line to the flare connection up in the third floor attic, what is that height elevation difference? They give me 49 feet. If I'm at 53 or 59 feet, you know, you're kind of playing where you become the warranty because of oil. I can't guarantee that compressor now can reclaim the oil from the furthest point of a line set. Like again, 66 is your max. Again, length now you're measuring. Well, they installed 85 feet and the compressor is screaming. It's only like a two-year-old piece of equipment. What's going on? Oh, you know, I got a problem. Come out here and I start walking the line set and I know it's only 66 feet and I'm like, you know, we need to have a conversation because I don't know if this is, this is a misapplied piece of equipment. You put in a situation it wasn't engineered to do, and now it's telling you, hey, you're killing me, the compressor's dead, and now the complaint comes in. So very short period of time, the, the unit will start telling you what maybe is a deficiency. And we don't ever really look at line sets. And for you guys in the sales role, when you're setting it up, it's really important to understand the importance of uh, distance. Here in the multiples, again, it, it same thing applies. For each one of those indoor heads, there's a minimum. For all four of those heads as a system, there's a minimum. For all four of those heads as a system, there's a maximum. And elevations, elevation from the outdoor to the furthest indoor unit, and then indoor unit to indoor unit even. So it kind of gets a little like, oh, oh, wow, I got to know that, know this. Yeah, when it comes to Fujitsu, these are the requirements. And I teach this every time I get you guys in a class. And it's all about where do I find the information? It's, it's in the installation structure manual. It can be in the catalog. It's now in the app. It's now in apps. Fujitsu offers Wi-Fi both in-house and third party. I mentioned in Tisa's home. This is their in-house. They call it FGL Air. That's their platform of Wi-Fi. You use their app for their platform. If you do the third party, you have to use it in Tisa's platform, what they call the AC Cloud app. 
Okay, so just know anywhere in the world, obviously I'm sitting on the couch, I'm too lazy to reach for the remote control, I got my cell phone, I can control my Fujitsu right from a smart device, a tablet or a cell phone. Again, quick little snapshot, all things we can do with residential, all right? So I want to talk about the website a little bit. How much time do we have, Rick? When was it supposed to be over? 11.30? Good question. Good question. All right. I know we started late, so it's probably coming near the end. So I'm going to pick something for you guys to kind of get a little gist of the web page. All right. And why I'm picking the web page is because it's what the customer actually has access to. And I always say you better understand what they're seeing because they're going to start maybe throwing some questions your way. All right, let me just find my share button here. I apologize. I closed some things down to gain some more space. And here it is, share. Share, share, share. Bam. All right. So you should be seeing, this is a FujitsuGeneral.com. This is nothing new. It's on every piece of literature. It is accessible to a residential platform or a commercial platform. And you have to kind of dabble here. You know, if you want to know what customers, consumers are seeing, well, then you start clicking. Go to this tab right here. All right, the little kid running in the front door. And hopefully it's going to start moving. Please start moving. Anytime now. There we go. So this is a homeowner's view. This is something we should be aware of products. You click on products, and all of a sudden, what are they? educating themselves on what are they building in their own minds as to what they want in their homes are we rising to the challenge of a question if they're asking about let's say hey you have this new air handler and i know nothing about the multi-position air handler so we want to get involved with energy efficiencies you know they have a lot of things here that we need to be aware of when we're talking to the end user all right let me just click on the extra low temperature heating because they're thinking heat pumps. They're thinking, oh, this is the next best thing to slice bread. I can get rid of my boiler. Well, that might not always be a fair statement. And we might not just buy into that right away because we have to have the, the educated objection as to why one over the other. I need to do a heat loss. I need to figure out what your house requires. And in those extremes, if you really truly want to go for Jitsu primary heat pump, what can it produce at those extreme temperatures? So here again is everything they're gonna learn about the letter H, a minus 15 heat pump. And how versed are you? Here's rebates, right? Here's the downloads. You, you wanna know why they have the catalog in front of you when you walk in? Well, right here, Halcyon mini splits. They can download the catalog as fast as you can. And now they're, they're kind of educating themselves. So we need to do our due diligence, not just in a three-hour session. It's what we do after we leave, really informing ourselves of all the things that we have. Um, we also have, I believe, the rebates here, right? Warranty lookups, downloads. You want, you want them to have an owner operation manual? Well, right here, heat pumps, Wi-Fi devices, quick installation for the Wi-Fi, operation manual right here. Well, I didn't get one. Your guy didn't leave it. You're the salesperson. Maybe they have your phone number. They start calling you. Do you want to print it out? You want to send them an email yourself, whatever you want to do. Or you can tell them, FujitsuGeneral.com, right there, owner's ma operation manual. What model do you have? So there's a lot of things at our fingertips that we're just not tapping into. And this has been inherent for probably a decade, you know, probably a good easy 10 years that I've been really trying to get people and promote the, the website. You know, if you're on the dealer toolbox, this is called a contractor toolbox. And if I click on this, it brings you to a login. Like I said, I don't have to remember everything. I just have to be able to find the information. So here's a login, right? And this is my, my toolbox as a rep, not you as a contractor, not you as a salesperson for a contractor or as a wholesaler. You have far less options. So don't get overwhelmed by all these icons. But you really want to see what this Infinite Comfort Pro app will do for you. This is a digital catalog, right? And this digital catalog really starts tying in. You can build the job site. You can save it. You can put some information in there. You click on project, 
and you start adding information, project name, some notes, customer's first, last name, telephone number. You start building a bill of material right from the get-go. You can save it. You can say, hey, I got the job. You can forward it as a PDF to your wholesaler, and they can send, give you a quote. I had a, we had a webinar yesterday, and some guy on the West Coast said, think about the information here. The company, called a contractor, has one universal login for this app. Now, whether I'm the salesperson, inside sales, looking at what they're selling, so I can now go out to the wholesaler and get a quote, to now the installer with the notes, with you're putting in information about line set lengths. You know, you're building it as an educated salesman, salesperson in that respect. And this is that one stop shop from three buttons project, you can build it. You want to learn more about product? Well, we can filter it. What type, right? What type of um, product are we looking at? So we can start building, let's say I want to do an ASU list of nine, right? You know, all of a sudden it's going to start clicking and giving us our options, RLF1, let's say. And it should start. Well, it should start anyway. I think I'm going to take the one off. It does have the ability to be a digital catalog for us. But here, it lists now everything as an ASU 9. Here's the, the Mac Daddy, the LM, the new platform. We have the LZs. But look at this. If I click on this C details, it's very hard. It's a 9,000, 12,000, the temperature range, the pre-charge length, line set requirements, 10 and... 10 and 66, all in your phone. There's no flipping through a catalog anymore. See details. Let's see what else we have. I'm chasing a rebate. It tells you your SEER, your EER, your HSPF, COP. These are all acronyms that are needed to qualify for rebates. It gives you your min maximum BTUs for heating and cooling. Temperature ranges again, the letter H, minus 15. Min piping, 10 feet. Max piping, 66. What line set sizes do I need? This is stuff that you have right now in an app, a free downloadable resource, a digital catalog. It's flare and additional refrigerant. So think about that's not your concern. But let's say it gives you a pre-charge length of 49 feet. I can go as far as 66. I'm going to go 59 feet. You may even calculate and note, OK, well, anything above 49, I have to add 0.22 ounces per additional foot. It's at 49, free charges what the factory gives you. I'm installing 59 based off a conversation with the homeowner. That's perfectly fine because I did not exceed 66 feet. I might make a note to my installer now, hey, 10 times 0.22, you need to weigh in when you do this install, 2.2 additional ounces. This is that quick reference and making everything goes uh, correctly once. You get one shot at doing it right, you know? You get a second shot at correcting it, but the truth is I'd rather do it one and done and have to have a complaint and, and losing money because I got to send a truck back or two guys that day. It gives you your voltages, it gives you your circuit breaker. I mean, this is everything that you can thumb through the catalog, but now you have it as a digital platform. It is so powerful. Really, really good stuff. What is the temperature ranges on the, on the remote control? You know, what's the lowest we can do in cooling? What is it in heating? Fahrenheit and Celsius. What is warranty? You know, these are things as tipping your hat to what you know when selling a Fujitsu product, right? The H, AHRI number, right? We have a listed number for AHRI. It might be needed for local rebates. This is where you find it. And what accessories can I add? Wi-Fi adapters, it's listed right here. Hey, when you're ordering this, because now the office goes in and sees notes, all right, we need to weigh in at 2.2 additional ounces, and also we want to add on these accessories, and you can actually now put this right in the notes. So from the sales side to the installer or to the inside sales ordering it, then to the installer. Oh, by the way, when a technician shows up because there was a bad flare, he even sees the note. Hey, by the way, when I go find fix, repair, clean, and weigh in a new, I just don't bring it back to the pre-charge amount. I have to weigh in an additional 2.2 ounces. So right from start to finish, cradle to grave, this is 
key. This is this is a beautiful tool for everybody in the food chain of Fujitsu. Bottom line, it has to be. No more catalogs. Catalogs are for homeowners. That's why it's on the web page. That's why it's in a downloadable section. So, um, neat stuff. Really neat stuff here. I'm going to just finish up this PowerPoint and say goodbye to you guys in that respect of, uh, I kind of ran over. This presentation really should be longer than an hour and a half, especially for you guys. This time of the year, I can't say enough to have you guys ready to go and attack with the offering, the mini, you know, the mini split line, the, the multi-position air handler. So there's just not enough time in the day to kind of do this in an hour and a half, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, let me see if I can get this rolling here. Next. The portal, the portal, again, you want to take a picture of this. You want to have the catalog. You just need to have it. Maybe you want to take this as a screenshot and you can offer it to your homeowners. Again, how much information do you want to be the resource for them or your contractors? Hey, I need some new catalogs. Can you use some catalogs? Hey, I don't have it right now in print, but here's a QR code. Have all you guys download on their tablets. That's great. Thank you. It's an instant respond to satisfying their need. All right, so think about the contractor when he wants information and you're the resource. Here's the look of what the Infinite, Co uh, Infinite Comfort Pro app looks like if you go to your app store. Rick, any questions at this point? Negative, sir. Well, I went longer than expected and that's okay in my book because hopefully you're gonna walk out of here with a little bit more information you came in with. Wales Darby is here to help. We work well with our distributors. We are a resource up the whole whole line. I've had homeowner conversations. I've definitely had contractor conversations. We've had utility conversations and not just my next immediate customer, the wholesaler. Wales Darby is a rep. We are here to help covering both sides of the river. Please reach out to us if you should need. If you like, I'll give you my cell phone. Um, it works like this. You have my cell phone, but it only works if you call me if I have you in my contacts. So if you want to write this down, 631-379-4942. With that, you need to text me before you forget your first, last name, who you work for, and where we met. You can reference online training, sales, whatever, webinar. You can today, today's date if you choose to. It works this way. I put you in my phone. You call me. It comes up as a name, not as a robocall. You're more likely to get an answer. So if there's anything else that Rick, myself, people in New Jersey, other, other part of our contractor services group, please lean on us. We'd like to get involved. Um, and that's about it. So thank you for your time today. And hopefully this has been worth of your morning. Very good. Thank you, guys. No questions.